Hello friends, this is Seher from Easy Beasy and the topic that we are going to discuss today is called as a tricarboxylic acid cycle. Well, this cycle has three different names. It is also called as Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle. Now, this cycle is the third step of aerobic respiration. The first step is that glucose enters the cytoplasm of the cell where it converts itself into a molecule called as pyruvate. This process is called as glycolysis. The second step is that pyruvate enters the mitochondria of that cell and converts itself into acetyl-CoA. This process is called as pyruvate oxidation. And the third step is that acetyl-CoA will enter the Krebs cycle. And we will discuss this step in detail in this video. So let's start. So this is the acetyl-CoA we have here. And this is the cycle it is going to enter. Within this cycle, we have a compound called as oxaloacetate. It is a four carbon compound. Now, oxaloacetate and acetyl CoA, with the help of an enzyme called as citrate synthase and water, will combine themselves and make a compound called as citrate with the release of coenzyme A that was present on acetyl CoA. In order to see how these two compounds are combined together, let's number the carbon compounds on each molecule. So if we say this is carbon number 1 and carbon number 2 on acetyl-CoA, then carbon number 3, 4, 5, and 6 are present on oxaloacetate. So by this way, we can number the carbon atoms present on the molecule of citrate and can see that carbon number 1 of acetyl-CoA combine itself with carbon number 3 of oxaloacetate. Now, citrate, with the help of an enzyme called as aconitase, will release water molecule and will convert itself into a compound called as cis-aconitate. Now, this is the same compound, but what happened is that OH from carbon number 3 and H from carbon number 5 is released as water from the compound, making or generating a double bond here. Now, cis-aconitate with the same enzyme called as aconitase will take the water back and will convert itself into a compound called as isocitrate. Now, as you can see, the OH of water molecule is attached itself with carbon number 5 and hydrogen is attached with carbon number 3. So, by this way, the citrate molecule isomerizes itself into isocitrate with the help of an enzyme called as conitase. Make sense? Okay. Now, isocitrate molecule with the help of an enzyme called as isocitrate dehydrogenase will convert itself into a compound called as alpha-ketoglutarate with the release of carbon dioxide that was present on position 4 here. Now, the enzyme is called as isocitrate dehydrogenase. It means that it is going to remove hydrogen from isocitrate. So, the hydrogen that was removed from isocitrate is over here, generating a double bond with oxygen on carbon number 5. Now, this is an oxidative reaction. So, this hydrogen will be taken up by NAD+, converting itself into NADH. Alpha-ketoglutarate, with the help of an enzyme called as alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, will convert itself into a compound called as succinyl-CoA. Now, in succinyl-CoA, the coenzyme A is involved. So, the COA will attach itself over here with the release of carbon dioxide that was present on position 6. Now, again, this enzyme is called as dehydrogenase. It means that it is going to remove a hydrogen group. So, in this case, it is going to remove the hydrogen group from acetyl-CoA enzyme. And again, this H will be gained by NAD+, converting itself into NADH. 
Now this succinyl-CoA, with the help of an enzyme called the succinyl-CoA synthase, will convert itself into a compound called as succinate. In this reaction, the coenzyme A will get released from succinyl-CoA, converting itself into succinate. This is again an oxidative reaction. So the electrons that are released by this reaction will be taken up by GDP and it will help with the conversion of GDP into GTP. GTP stands for guanosine triphosphate. That will convert itself back into GDP by giving this phosphate group to ADP, converting itself into ATP. Make sense? Okay. Now the succinate, with the help of an enzyme called as succinate dehydrogenase, will convert itself into a compound called as fumarate. Now here you can see that hydrogen from these two carbon atoms are going to get released and we can see a double bond present on fumarate. Now the hydrogen that was released from succinate will be gained by FAD converting itself into FADH2. FADH2 is the second mobile electron carrier, which will take hydrogen and electrons from a Krebs cycle to electron transport chain. The first mobile carrier was NAD+. Up till now, the whole process of this Krebs cycle was happening inside the matrix of mitochondria. But this part of the reaction occurs on the inner membrane of mitochondria because the enzyme called as succinate dehydrogenase is embedded inside the inner membrane of mitochondria. And this FAD is attached with this membrane and will gain hydrogen from succinate on this membrane. Okay, we will discuss this thing in the electron transport chain in more detail. Now this fumarate, with the help of an enzyme called as fumarase and water, is going to convert itself into a compound called as L-malate. Now over here, with the help of water, this carbon will attach itself with OH and this hydrogen will be attached on the second carbon. Now this L-malate, with the help of an enzyme called as malate dehydrogenase, will convert itself into oxaloacetate. Now this is again a dehydrogenase enzyme, so it will remove hydrogen from this compound and give this hydrogen to NAD+, converting it into NADH. So this is also an oxidative reaction and giving electrons plus hydrogen to NAD+. And this oxaloacetate will be available for the next acetyl-CoA and this cycle will start again. Now if we look at the cycle in general, we can see that acetyl-CoA have two carbons. And these two carbons are going to release from this cycle in the form of two carbon dioxide molecules. And the rest of the molecules are going to convert themselves back into oxaloacetate. Overall in this Krebs cycle, one acetyl-CoA generates three NADH molecules and one FEDH2 molecule with one ATP. Now as we know that one glucose is going to convert itself into two pyruvate and two pyruvate is going to convert themselves into two acetyl-CoA. So one glucose will run two cycles of Krebs cycle. So in total, one glucose will generate six molecules of NADH, two molecules of FADH2, and two ADB molecules. That's it for now. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, please subscribe our channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.